The Bronx get their first WAC champion of the year. We have full coverage. UTPA baseball continues to swing some hot bats. And with the school year nearing its completion, it's time to give out some awards. We take you to the Student Athlete Awards Banquet. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. The UTPA men's golf team knew Nicholas Platret was going to be good when they recruited him, but he's been more than that. As a freshman, he's done something special that hasn't been done here in quite a few years. Anais Cortez has more. The Bronx have their first champion of the year, men's golf Nicholas Platret. After shooting a career best five under par 67, Platret came back from Arizona as the WAC individual champion. I feel very good. It's my first win in the USA, so of course I'm, I'm proud of it. And I think I won the, the most important tournament because it's a conference. Uh, my coach told me it was only 35 players, so I had a great chance to win. So I practiced very hard for that. And I went there like, I wanted to win, but I knew a lot of good players were there. I tried my best and it worked pretty good. Platret is the first Bronx to qualify for an NCAA tournament since 1978. He will compete next in the NCAA regional tournament on May 14th through the 16th. Uh, I was super excited. Um, it was a lot of fun and, you know, he's been playing well all year, so I had a good feeling about going into the week and he just went out and performed really well. I think he stayed relaxed. Uh, he didn't put too many expectations on himself. He knew going into the final round that he was going to need to play really well. And actually throughout the round, he didn't even think that uh, he was in contention. But uh, I knew he was because I could see the live scoring. So I was just trying to stay calm and uh, he stayed pretty relaxed. Platret has an incredible consistency as he has had 14 rounds of 77 or lower throughout this season. I knew I had to shoot very low the last round, so my coach was following me all day and I just tried to make a lot of birdies as much as I could and my birding was good, so I made six birdies, it was good. In preparation for the upcoming regional tournament, Platret tells us what he will be focusing on. I'm just going to try to do what I've been doing all year with my coach, focusing on my putting and just keeping the same, same way to play, getting ready for the regionals. And it would be tough to win, but you never know what can happen. For Bronx Country, I am Anais Cortez. Let's take a look at the final results. You see the gaudy numbers Platret put up passing five competitors on the final day with the eighth lowest round in program history. We talked plenty about that final round 67, and deservedly so, but that first round 69 really set the tone and allowed Platret to still be even after two rounds. Platret will find out which NCAA regional he's headed to during the selection show on May 4th, so we'll let you know next week on Bronx Country. As for the women, the Bronx came in sixth at the WAC Championships, Blake Peterson led the way by finishing in 25th with a 240. Marissa Canales finished strong with the final round, 78. Well, I mean, I thought we learned a lot this year, and um, they were able to utilize some of that. Obviously, we're looking to the future, you know, to build and, and do much better and, and perform better at the conference championship. UTPA men's tennis with some honors on the eve of their WAC championships, as Juan Cruz Soria earned WAC Athlete of the Year and first team all-WAC singles honors, while Hector Ramirez and Kobe Jansen earned second team all WAC singles honors. Juan, player of the year. He went from last year as a freshman coming into January um, to not winning, not being on first or second team last year, winning freshman of the year, which um, I thought he had earned at least one or two of those positions. And now for him in one year to go undefeated, 5-0 in the regular season, 2-0 in the postseason, so 7-0 and overall, playing the number one position is tremendous. On to the semifinals match on Saturday. Originally scheduled for one, the match started at almost 11 p.m. indoors after the outdoor courts were rained out. The Bronx performed well, 
with the duos of Juan Cruz Soria and Kobe Jansen, and Nicolas Servelin and Elliot Johnstone leading the Bronx to a doubles win. Then, in singles, Soria won at number one, as did Jansen at number three, and Miguel Alvarez Heavy at number five. Bronx win, four to two. It was one of the best collegiate environments I have been in, bar none. We started at, at 1047 at night, indoors, at their place, with a rowdy crowd, over 100 people there. And so there were, there were nine of us who just believed in us, there were only nine of us who wanted to get it done. And it came down to six guys on the court in doubles, six guys on the court in singles to get it all done. And the championship match was a heart-pumping affair against top-seeded New Mexico State. The Bronx started off strong by taking the doubles point, but then fell behind 1-3 after the Aggies won on courts 4, 5, and 6. Hector Ramirez got the Bronx back on the board with a win at number 2. And then Juan Cruz Soria earned a hard-fought three-set winner at number 1. So it all came down to court 3, where Kobe Jansen won the first set 6-3, but Christopher Goncalves won the final two sets by scores of 7-5 to close it out. Bronx fall 3-4, but do get the two members of the all-tournament team in Soria and Jansen. You know, we took the doubles point, which, you know, we were confident we were going to do, and to get it done at, at one and two doubles uh, was terrific. And then uh, to go into singles, and we're up. You know, we knew four, five, and six was going to be a challenge because New Mexico State's deep. It doesn't matter who they put in any spot. They're deep. They're good. Um, and so we knew four, five, and six was going to be tough. So we went down. We were down. We're down one, three in the match. But we're up a set at one, two, and three. Uh, Hector gets it done at two, gets it back to two, three. Cruiser finishes it off in three sets, man, to get us to three all at one singles, and it comes down to three singles, our freshman against their freshman. Um, he outplayed Kobe. I um, mean, simply outplayed him. He hit a winner on match point. You hit a winner on match point, you've outplayed somebody. So they earned it, and so congratulations to New Mexico State. UTPA women's tennis with some honors on the eve of their WAC championships as well, with Katya Stavrilaki earning first team all WAC singles honors, and the duo of Stavrilaki and Regan Greenwood earning second team all WAC doubles honors. Yeah, it was exciting for them to, to get that honor. They really deserved it. They've played well over the season. They really fought hard for their singles and uh, especially their doubles together. They've improved over the year. So it was, I was happy for them to get that. The Bronx also holding a number two seed, getting things going against host and third seed of Kansas City. Although they dropped the doubles point, the Bronx took care of business at singles with wins from Katya Stavrilaki at number one, Regan Greenwood at number three, Mariana Runzauer at number five, and Natasha Mink at number six, Bronx win, four to two. It was exciting, it was loud. Indoors was something that we hadn't really practiced on all season, but everyone was looking forward to it. I think we all got to conference and everyone just wanted to get on court and to play. And it was exciting, I think, to have a big crowd out there. And they may not have been cheering for us, but we tried to use that as motivation to really get us going. Uh, we struggled there at the first doubles point, but they came back strong and they really fought hard for their singles matches. In the championship match, the Bronx fell behind top seed New Mexico State early, and the Aggies pounced. The Bronx led at number six singles when play stopped after the Aggies clinched the match by going up 4 nothing. For their efforts, Katia Starlaki and Regan Greenwood earned all tournament team honors. Well, that was a tough one for us. We knew going into it, it was going to be a battle for us. We just didn't have it there that day, but you know what? The girls gave it everything that they had over the season. Um, they deserved to get to the championship. I'm happy that they were able to get that far and um, really give all their teammates everything that they had. UTPA women's basketball announced another signing as well, bringing in guard Adele Turk out of Bodwell High School in North Vancouver, Canada. Turk averaged over 30 points per game in two seasons, including 32 points, eight rebounds, four assists, and three steals per game as a senior. The 120th ranked player in the 2015-16 recruiting class by the Dan Olson Collegiate Girls Basketball Report, Turk has national team experience as she was part of the Turkish national team from 2012 to 14. Very excited to, to have her. Uh, she's a uh, a true point guard, but she can play a combo guard. She's 5'9". She gives us some height at the point guard position. UTBA baseball entered this past weekend averaging more than eight runs per game over the last week. So what can they do for an encore? Next on Bronx Country, highlights from the Bronx series against Northern Colorado.
work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. The UTPA baseball team split a whack series with Chicago State last weekend, with the last game ending in a tie. And if you think that frustrated the Bronx, just see how they responded. The Bronx went to Prairie View A&M and blew them out of the water, 14 to four in a game that ended after seven innings due to the mercy rule. New season high in scoring for the Bronx, 14 hits for the team as well, including three Bronx with three hit games. Logan Landon hit a home run that hit the Prairie View A&M scoreboard. Victor Garcia Jr. drove in a career-high five runs, scored a career-high three runs, and after giving up hits to the first and third batters, Alex Henson was perfect the rest of the way while picking up his first win. We finally uh, really did a good job of uh, offensively, Jonah, of uh, swinging the bats, getting timely hits. Uh, we had uh, about three or four guys that really hit the ball well. Um, you know, Victor uh, Garcia did a good job swinging the back. Call uh, Cole Lankar also did a very nice job, and, and Logan Landon has been doing a good job for us all year. So it was good to see the offense, uh, you know, put up double digits. Bronx back home against Northern Colorado over the weekend. Game one, Bronx down three nothing out of the gate. Not anymore. That ball gets away as Corey Davis scores. It's three to one. Next batter, Jacob Huckabee. That's deep enough for Jesus Garcia to score from third. Bronx within one. Next inning, Bears threatening. Runner at third with two outs, when Logan Landon extends and makes a ridiculous catch. That catch got on national TV, inning over. Bottom of the inning, same score, and we're back to Davis. Ties the game at three. After a single by Garcia, here's the other Garcia. Victor sends the ball off the base of the wall. Two runs come home, Bronx up 5-3. One batter later. Garcia now at third, balk! Garcia scores, six to three Bronx. On to the fourth. How about a little more defense? Jacob Huckabee with a diving catch. Bottom of the inning, game tied at six, and it's a squeeze. Scott Mercer executes the suicide to perfection. Bronx back on top. Next batter, Cole Ankar. Logan Landon with some aggressive base running to score from second. Bronx up eight, six. Zach Martinez did his best to make the score hold up, striking out three and three in the third innings of scoreless relief. But the Bears score four in the ninth to beat the Bronx 10 to eight. And we did a nice job. You know, we had two guys on, uh, runners on, um, chance to uh, tie the game and maybe even go and take the lead. And that's all you can ask for. I mean, you want to go into the ninth inning with a chance to win. Um, and we did that with the two guys on. And unfortunately, um, we couldn't get it done. But uh, overall, uh, last night's game, today's game, um, um, and pleased with the offense, the way that it's coming along. Game two, Bronx down one nothing in the first, but they've got him on the corners with one out when Corey Davis delivers. Ties the game at one. One out later, ducks on the pond for Victor Garcia Jr. Two runs come home, Bronx up 3-1. After a single by Jacob Huckabee, Manny Laredo through the right side. Garcia scores four to one Bronx. Move ahead to the seventh, it's four to two, no, it's not. Cole Longcar down the left field line. Landon scores, Bronx up 5-2. Ninth inning, Johnny Gonzalez looking for his first save, and that goes six, four, three. Bronx win, 5-2. I mean, it feels good, man. Coming out, I've been pitching very well. Uh, hopefully it just keeps going on. Hopefully we just keep getting the wins. That's all I could ask for. I think um, just all of us are kind of, it's kind of starting to fit in like a puzzle. And, and uh, everything's starting to, we're pitching, we're playing defense, and we're hitting. So it's a good time to get hot right now. We've been playing a little bit better uh, the last couple of weekends. We're beginning to get some, uh, some timely hitting, um, which is important. Uh, when you have uh, the offense that we have this year, you have to get those timely hits. If you don't, uh, we're not going to be, uh, like we've been in years past, a high-scoring offense. Um, so we have to get timely hits. We've been doing that. Today was another instance where we got some timely hitting. 
Um, the bullpen has, uh, again, starting to throw well. So we're beginning to see some signs that, uh, of coming back that like we were early in the year where we were playing some pretty good baseball. Rubber game Sunday. Bronx down 3 0 in the fourth and getting no hit. Scratch that. Corey Davis with a double. That drives home Logan Landon, who had walked. It's 3 1. Next batter, Jesus Garcia. Does his job to get another run in. It's a one run game. Same score in the sixth. Wild pitch. Cole Lankar scores. Game tied at three. Seventh now. Bronx down four to three. And Landon plays Pepper with the right field wall. Manny Laredo and Lee Rios both score as Landon finds himself at third with a triple. And then Jacob Huckabee gets Landon home. Sacrifice fly. Six to four Bronx. Ninth inning. Bronx down eight six. Reinhardt second with two outs when Huckabee gets into one to left. That ball hits off of the bullpen wall. RBI double to bring the Bronx within one. That's as close as they got in an 8-7 loss. Our goal is to score uh, at least seven runs. Um, and once we get ahead or if we're behind, we're just trying to score as many runs as possible to, to even extend the lead or get back the lead. The offense did a nice job. Uh, we should be able to win. Um, you know, when we give the pitching staff uh, seven runs. But unfortunately, uh, defense wasn't up to par. We made some uh, bad mistakes, um, especially on the bunt. We picked it up. Uh, we had a chance to get the lead runner. We throw it away. On to track and field. Three student athletes qualified for the prestigious Drake Relays. Javier Cartero and Cristina Santiago Bravo strong in the hammer throw, finishing in ninth and 11, while DeAndre Barroso took 17th in the 400 meter hurdles. The rest of the team went up to Rice for the J. Fred Duckett Twilight, recording 14 top 10 finishes. Clarissa Gonzalez led the way by taking silver in the discus. Megan Shaw right behind her in fifth. Leokawan Williams placed third in the triple jump, while Mar Gonzalez came in sixth on the men's side. For complete results, you can log on to utpabronx.com. Uh, it was a great meet for the team, um, I would say. We had a lot of great marks, uh, which is just what we're looking for at this time of the season, where we had the last competition before we head towards conference championships. We wanted to see everyone pretty much at their best, and we saw a lot of that. We saw a lot of great marks on the track, a lot of great improvements, and uh, in the field events as well. The majority of the UTPA Athletic Department got together on Sunday to celebrate a year of Bronc legacy. And you know what that means? Awards! Coming up on Bronc Country, we have the full slate of winners from the Student Athlete Awards Banquet. Near the end of every year, usually shortly before finals, all of the student athletes, coaches, and administrators get together for a banquet to celebrate a year of Bronc legacy and the best of the best of the best with honors from the year that was in UTPA athletics. Romeo Villarreal has the story. This past Sunday, the UTPA held its annual student athlete banquet to celebrate all the hard work and dedication shown by student athletes. The banquet started with food and music, followed by the handing out of awards to outstanding student athletes. The first two awards handed out to student athletes were the Mr. and Mrs. Bronk Awards, given to the male and female athletes with the most school spirit. The winners of this year's awards were Student Athlete Advisory Committee President Everett Osborne, and women's soccer co-captain, Hannah Spetz. Honestly, I had no clue. I didn't expect this at all, but um, it's a great honor to win it. And um, it's because of my team that I'm here and coaching staff. We've had a great season and um, to be a part of Bronx and uh, UTPA is fantastic. The next awards were Breakout Athlete of the Year awards, won by Tiandria Nolan of women's basketball and baseball's Logan Landon, who made the journey from the mound to the plate, leading to a breakout season. Feels great, you know, uh, just being able to go out there every night and, uh, and help my team win. You know, I had a had a little bit of an off season last year as a pitcher, but uh, just thank the thank the uh, thanks the coaches for giving me the opportunity to to come out and uh, make an impact on my team. One of the non-student athlete awards given out is Staff Member of the Year, awarded this year to Maho Kame for her work with the women's golf team after they found themselves without a coach at the start of their season. Yeah, that was a little bit crazy, but it was again such a great experience uh, to be on the other side, not being an athlete but being staff. Um, I enjoyed every moment, and it's just it's it's been a, a year of good experience, learning a lot. Just I mean being a coach for just one tournament, but still it was great, and being in the office, it's rewarding. 
This year's Rookies of the Year were Andrea Barrera of women's soccer on the women's side and men's basketball's Dan Kimasa taking home a share of the award on the men's side alongside Kobe Jansen of men's tennis. Along with all the awards given out for athletes' performances on the field, two endowments were given to the male and female student-athletes with the highest GPAs this year. Carrie Williams of Track and Field took home the Anne Lamantia Award, while Brian McDonald, also of Track and Field, took home the Lou Hassel Endowment on the men's side. Discipline, you know, uh, I guess it just came with experience. After a couple of years, you know, you get used to it, and then, you know, you're able to do what you got to do in order to, to both stay good in the classroom and on the field. The next award was Comeback Athlete of the Year, won this year by Destiny Schultz of Track and Field, who after a two-year absence, used to take care of her son, came back this season and put up astounding results. I think I came back with a purpose, um, definitely wanting to come back and be something inspirational to the younger athletes that were below me and to my son. So, to win this award, it means a lot. The last individual awards handed out for accomplishments on the field were the Student Athlete of the Year awards, with Logan Landon and Juan Cruz Soria of men's tennis taking home a share of the award on the men's side. This year's female winner was Cristina Santiago Bravo of track and field, who was surprised to win the award after seeing the other athletes nominated with her. This is amazing. I didn't expect this because I know there's so many athletes, some good athletes, so I didn't expect this. I have been working hard this year. I don't know. It has been amazing. We have conferences in two weeks, so it's going to be a great push for me. After all the awards were passed out, senior ring certificates were presented to this year's graduating class of student-athletes, followed by desserts and a chance for student-athletes to take pictures with each other in a photo booth. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. Want to help prepare our student-athletes for excellence in life? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BATH for just $50 a year. All of the proceeds go directly to student-athlete scholarships, so visit BroncAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century. Light week ahead for the Bronx, as the only team competing is baseball, and they're on the road to visit North Dakota this weekend. Monday a big day as well, as Nicholas Platret will learn his NCAA Regionals destination. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then...
We will work our minds, raise our hands, and search for the answers. We will study the stars, learn to speak each other's languages, and hear each other's songs. We will make each tomorrow brighter, more prosperous, and completely new. We cannot predict the future, but we can and will build it. We will come together. The University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. New opportunities for the 21st century.